Welcome to the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, the space for healers, coaches, and conscious leaders on a mission to elevate collective consciousness. I'm your host, Danny C. Muniz, a former Catholic disciple turned eclectic witch, guiding you through the realms of astrology, spirituality, and the quest to escape the matrix. It's time to unleash the mystic within. Let the transformation begin. It is January 29th, the last few days of the first month of the year. We've got February rolling in this week, and we've got some pretty easy, I'm going to say, chill energy coming at us this week, my friend. It's time to take a pause and move things forward. So, Stay tuned because in this video, we are talking about our sidereal astrology forecast for the week of January 29th through February 4th, 2024. Hello, 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 my friend. Welcome back to the channel. If you are here on the podcast, hey, my friend, welcome, welcome. If you did not know, we launched the Cosmic Mystic podcast earlier this month in January. You can find a link down in the uh, description box here on YouTube. And if you are on the podcast and didn't know there was a YouTube channel, come on over to Keeping It Real with Sidereal over on YouTube, we've got uh, where you can see me <laughs> live, um, maybe not live, live, but you get what I mean. And you can see the charts. So if you're somebody who wants to see the charts and look at what I'm looking at as I'm explaining it, feel free to come on over to the YouTube channel. If you're like, I just want to listen to this, then head on over to the podcast. Uh, the each week, the Sidereal Astrology Forecast is live, uh, generally on Mondays. Can't guarantee the time yet, my friend. I'm working on that schedule, working to get it really refined and simplified. So we've got videos every single week for you. Okay. And and uh, podcast. <laughs> Still getting used to that one. All right. So this week we are uh, it is we are in the beautiful energy of the waning quarter moon. So I don't talk, generally don't talk a lot about the lunar cycle. I'm going to start adding this in because I think you guys are ready for it. So the waning quarter moon, if we're looking at the whole cycle, the lunar cycle, right? We just had our uh, full moon in Cancer and our full moon was last Thursday. And so once we, we get that peak energy at the full moon, the energy starts to kind of wane off, right? It starts to fall off, but that doesn't mean that we are done. The full moon doesn't mean completion. All it means is we are at the midpoint. We are at the halfway point. That is what our full moon energy is. It's the midway point, the halfway point, the time for us to pause and reflect on how far we've come and how much further we have to go. So I want you to think about the full moon from this kind of standpoint. If we were to have a project, let's say, I mean, if you've ever participated in a group project in high school or college, or maybe a project at work, and we have milestones, right? We have our, we start off, we start going, and we have these milestones that we hit. And it's really interesting because the beginning of a project, right? Like when I was in corporate, we had tons of uh, projects. I was so blessed and so lucky to be part of the training and development team. Uh, I was a senior training and development specialist at one point. And so I really absolutely loved that because we got to work on so many different projects um, for the company. And so there was always that like initial planning, right? That was the initial planning stage, which is new moon, where we think about the goals and the project, the milestones, what we need to get together, who's going to be on the project, who's going to, you know, do we figured out all those details. And that was usually the very beginning. That's the beginning of us deciding, right, what our intention is, and then putting our plan together in action, right? That's generally what that first part of the cycle is. And then we move into getting started working on the project, right? And then there's a midway point where we get to where we we celebrate 
what we've already been able to accomplish, right? If you've been in those meetings, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, how far are we on this? And where are we with that? And what were, what did we complete? And what do we still need to do? What's still on our to-do list or what's still on our agenda? And so we come up against that at full moon. And so I want you to think about that idea as like, we had just hit that point and now it's like, okay, what do we still have to do? And what are we going to let go of? Because if you've been on these teams, just like I have, where we get to that point and it's like, oh, we really wanted to do X, Y, and Z, but either budgeting with our timing or just logistically, it doesn't seem to work out and like, okay, we're going to put this off or we're not going to do this anymore. That is where we come right now. We're at that point where we're like, okay, we're going to finalize these pieces that we know we can get done towards our goal, towards our intention, and then we're going to wrap things up, right? We're going to start to wrap things up. We're like preparing for that stage. And then we get to uh, the things of like, okay, I'm not going to, we're not going to move forward with this anymore. We're not going to do this. We're going to take this off or we're going to table it, right? For maybe the next segment of the project, right? The same idea with our intentions. So sometimes your intention has gotten to the point where we've like made some progress and we're, we're really seeing some things move forward because you can use the lunar cycle for projects, just FYI. And then we get to that, that we're like, Ooh, I might need a longer period of time. This is going to take me longer to do. Or we get to the point and we're like, okay, I'm realizing that these things are not, we're not going to have these things. These things aren't going to happen. Like these were really great ideas in the planning stage, but now it's not going to kind of work out. So we have to readjust. That's what this period is. So when you think of waning quarter, I want you to think of that's kind of like that finalizing, wrapping things up and letting go of the things that are not quite right for what the project is or need to be delayed. Now, with that, some discomfort can come through. And I really love the pairing of these two because we are at the end of January. And so if you hit the ground running, like most of the collective has, right? We hit the ground running. I know I didn't, I tried not to, <laughs> but we hit the ground running. And then we get to this point where we're like, oh, I really wanted to, you know, make sure that I was hitting those 10,000 steps a day or hit the gym or uh, do the fast or do the cleanse or right go to the gym, whatever it might be, read a book. Maybe your goal was to read a, a book a month, right? And so you're like, you didn't, you haven't finished the book yet. Maybe you're like halfway through the book and we've only got a couple of days and you're trying to finish it, right? And there could be this discomfort where we are feeling like, oh, I missed it again. I didn't complete it again. I I didn't do what I would what I said I was going to do or something happened that derailed me where my focus was no longer here and it moved to here. So there could be and I'm I'm telling you this because this could happen to you and I don't I want you to know that it's absolutely okay to acknowledge where what we have done and where we are inside the retreat and reflect, reset and reflect, um, I was going to say mastermind. Ooh, maybe it is a mastermind. Uh, reset and reflect uh, retreat. We talked about that of where are we now? So like up to this point, what have I been focusing on? And it's a great question to ask any time of year. I really love to ask it at the uh, end of the year, beginning of the year, but really good to ask any time, like right now in this waning quarter, um, part of the cycle, end of the month, right? If you're following the calendar, end of the month, if you're following the lunar cycle, waning quarter, where you can ask yourself up to this point, where has my focus and attention been? What have I been focusing on? What have I been doing? And just acknowledge it. Acknowledge like, Ooh, <laughs> right. I taught our question this month. If you're following the podcast, right? I asked three questions in every single episode. And the first, uh, the, the last question, because we are currently in Capricorn season is how did you step into mastery this week? And when we look at that idea of mastery, I have been the master of something. Now, whether I've been in my 
beautiful, amazing skills, it's a whole other story because I could be the master of procrastination. I could be the master of planning, right? I could be the master of delaying things. I could be the master of avoidance, right? There's a million different things that I can be a master of. And so it's important for us right now to just take that minute and ask yourself, my friend, what have I been the master of this month? Where has my energy and focus been over this period of time? And if it's not in alignment with the person that you want to be this year, the goals that you have set for yourself, the intentions of what you want to create in this year, I'm going to invite you to readjust your sales, to readjust your sales and say who, what, how, not the how so much, but the who, what first, who, what, and then the how. We want to step into that energy first before we move forward. Okay. That is where, that's where our waning, uh, waning quarter moon, that's where we are in the lunar cycle. Let's talk about where our moon's going to be. And then we'll get into some other things that we have going on with our um, moon, uh, I'm sorry, sky this week. Okay. We have our uh, moon beginning actually begins in Leo. We're at the very, very edges. So we can locate our moon right here, right? You see our moon is right here at 26 degrees Leo at 8 a.m. Central. And so by, you know, the afternoon, we'll have moved into Virgo. So we begin in our fire sign of Leo, but we're going to move right into Virgo really quickly. So Virgo is an earth energy. So our sun is in an earth energy and our moon is in an earth energy. So over these next few days, we're really going to be in that deeply rooted energy. So for, for my fire and air signs, this can feel a little bit like you're feeling stuck. This can feel like you're like being, um, like you can't move anything forward. <laughs> like you're like, oh, <laughs> right now my <clears throat> water and earth signs are like, yes, <laughs> This is my energy. This is my time because this is a really good time for us to get things done. So not in a fast paced hustle, hustle movement, but very much in a like bringing things together, very much in a way of like getting into things, right? Like getting into the actual um, project, the actual documents, right? Actually doing right? The thing, not thinking about the thing, not researching the thing, but actually doing the thing, right? If you look at like, uh, if we talk about finances, right? It's not, it's not reviewing your budget. It's actually paying your bills, <laughs> right? It's not looking at, it's not, it's not reviewing where I spent my money this month. It's actually paying my bills. <laughs> it's like, it's the, it's the actual doing of the thing, right? So we've got that energy. So if you are, you know, wanting to finish up these projects, right, that you're working on, this is a really good time from Tuesday all the way, we'll go ahead and fast forward here, all the way through till about early. So it's going to move early uh, Thursday morning into Libra. So we have our beginning uh, of the of the week here, starting with Leo, we move into Virgo, and then we're going to be in Virgo till very early Thursday, and we'll be in Libra starting Thursday into Friday. Now, Libra is an air energy, so Libra is that energy of researching, of reviewing, of coming up with ideas. Um, brainstorming is really good during this time. So, if this week. You're wrapping up those those details like Monday through Thursday. We're wrapping up those details on the project. And then we get to th uh, Thursday, Friday, and it's like, okay, brainstorming. What else can I complete in this next week, right? The upcoming week um, as we wrap up the lunar cycle and prepare right for our next new moon. So like, what else can I get done? What, what, where can I move these things around? It can also be finishing up little, like little things, like filing things away, uh, deleting things out of your uh, email or your computer, right? A declutter of your computer. It can be anything like that where you're like kind of 
quick, fast things. Air energy is quick and it's fast and it doesn't, it doesn't sit on things. Where earth energy is going to sit on things, air energy is not. And then we'll get into uh, Saturday and Sunday. Well, there it is. Okay. Actually, so it's early, early Saturday morning. I said that wrong. So it's Thursday morning all the way till Saturday morning. We'll be in that Libra energy and then we'll move into Scorpio later in uh, later Saturday. And then we'll be in Scorpio, which is a water sign all the way through Monday. So a water sign is a good time to relax. It's a good time to for self-care, to take care of um, your needs. So it's an emotional sign. So it's like filling that emotional cup. And when I say that, that doesn't mean go have a cry fest. Although my friend, those are really good. I would highly recommend them. You can go do a cry fest if that feels good, but any way that you like to fill your cup, right? So like an air moon tends to love to be social. They love to do um, games or puzzles, right? A fire sign might want to go to the roller rink or go play uh, frisbee or go swim or go for a run, go bike ride, right? An earth sign might want to get into the garden, might want to cook some food, right? Each element has a different way that they do self-care. So depending on your moon, you might find one of the, you might, might've been like, Ooh, that sounds really good. Like, that's what I want to do because that's, that's what's natural for you. That's how you fill your cup. So water element during a water moon, definitely a good time to take care of self. It's also a good time to dive into creative projects. So if you are uh, wanting to design something or painting or some type of other craft. I love to do crafts. I have a craft day with my friends. Every quarter we get together and we have to make a day of it. It's amazing. And it's just like creating, right? So really good time to create uh, during this water moon that we have coming up on this weekend. So that'll be Saturday, Sunday, and then into Monday, we'll kick kick it off as well. Now, for my entrepreneur friends, writing emotional content and also uh, working on like the graphics for a web page, a sales page, um, creating like the like you know how sometimes you you might create like a workbook or a guidebook. Shout out to the Zodiacal Season guidebook that I put out every single month. If you want to download that guidebook and learn all about the season that we're in, there is a link down in either the description box or the show notes. Uh, But maybe you're putting together that, right? And it's like adding the color, adding the images, adding the little details to like zhuzh it up so that it looks really nice. Virgo loves that. Loves, loves, loves doing that. And also I would definitely recommend it in Scorpio. The other thing I'd recommend in Scorpio is deeper work. (laughs) So grab your journal, get with your healer, do some deep internal shadow work, inner work, uh, inner child work, um, past life work is also really, really good during our uh, Scorpio moon. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to the beginning of this week. And let's just a couple of other things that I want to talk about. A couple of things that are happening with our sun. And then we're going to get into a couple of things that uh, I want to point out to you this week. So as you can see, uh, our sun, right? We always look to see where our sun is. Our sun is right here. It is still in the energy of Capricorn. So we can move that over and see. We've got the sun in Capricorn. So the sun is at 14 degrees. So we haven't, um, we're about halfway through. So we've still got a couple more weeks. We won't see the sun move into Aquarius until uh, middle of February, right after our new moon in Capricorn that's coming up. Uh, So we've got a little bit more time here in our, with our sun, but we do have one aspect that I want. Well, there's two actually that I want to point out that are coming in this week. And that is... Uh, first off, we're going to see this sun square Jupiter fall off, which will be uh, nice, but we're going to add in this sun sextile Chiron. And then we're going to also see um, the aspect here, the square to Uranus. So that's coming up this week. We have uh, the 30th, we've got the sun sextile Chiron, Chiron, which Chiron is our, our deepest wounds. Uh, the sun is our consciousness. So this is, um, you might be attracting people during this period who have um, similar wounds or challenges that you have. And this is a time for you to 
share, right? To share what you've done, share how you've overcome these challenges. You might, uh, you know, feel compelled, right? To guide somebody, to assist somebody in moving through something, whether you're a healer or a coach or, or, you know, if you're not, if you don't label yourself as one of the things still in conversation with your friends, with your family, with your neighbor, you could be helping them move through something that they're challenged with because you've been through it. So we might see some of that coming up this week for one. Um, Also some like a desire or even a motivation to work through some of the old traumas or uh, insecurities, especially insecurities because we have our son in Saturn. So we could be seeing some of those not good enough type um, thoughts or ideas or energy coming through. So if you see that, it's again, like this this weekend, even more so with that sun, uh, I'm sorry, with that moon in Scorpio, really good time to kind of work through some of those things. We also, because we have a connection that I'll I'll mention in just a bit, we have a a sextile with Mercury and Neptune, uh, really allowing your dreams and your imagination to allow you to discover some things about this or give you some insights. So we'll talk about that in a second, but this is a really good healing period, especially as we're moving, we're in this waning period as we move into, right, getting getting prepared for uh, the new moon coming up. All right. And then the other one is this square here to Uranus. So Uranus, again, he's he's the rebel, right? He's the rebel, guys. He likes to do his own thing, change things up here. So when we see a sun and Uranus uh, square in particular, he can, he can kind of bring some unexpected energy in. And so this is going to require more open-mindedness and flexibility because there could be some uncertainty or uneasiness or anxiousness around like there's something coming. There's, there's a big change happening. There's, there's just, there's just like this unpredictable energy. And I don't know if you can feel it. I know I can feel it, but there's like this unpredictable energy that's happening right now. And it's like building up and building up and building up and it's been building up. Now, the other thing I didn't mention, and we can see here, if I take this back, we can see that all of our planets right now are direct. Uranus moved out, no, Neptune moved out of its retrograde period over the weekend. So all planets are direct and we're going to be this way until Mercury goes retrograde in April. So we have a couple of months here of this forward movement energy, right? We had Jupiter go direct and now we've got that Neptune energy. So we've got this forward motion energy that is happening. So my friend, things are moving forward. So there could have been and some buildup happening. And I think, you know, we can see this, we can feel it, right? There's been like this buildup happening and it's like the tension is there, right? We want, we, we got to that point and now it's ready to like move. It's ready to move forward. So, you know, there could be some unexpected changes that are happening or th- events that are happening, things that are happening, um, through this next period. And this is through the 13th of February. So we're going to see this over this next like three weeks. There could definitely be some outbursts, some anger, some unexpectedness that is being shown by yourself or others. Um, You may want to change things up yourself. Um, Maybe like opening up, like you're seeing like this new path opening. It's like, I want to go, I want to go do this. I want to break free from some of my habits or break free from some of my limitations. This is actually a really, really good time to do that as well. So there's that outer kind of collective energy of some unexpectedness that could could be coming, right? And and feeling that uneasiness and also like that feeling within like, ah, I just need to break free. I just need to break out of this. I am done with all this. I'm moving forward. And so we can see that as well. Now, the other thing I want to point out here that's happening with Mercury. So if we go to Mercury, well, we can see here, actually, before I even do that, we can see like there's, you know, these guys are pretty close. They're not all conjunct, but they are really pretty close to each other. So we've got Venus here, Mars here, Mercury, and Pluto. So Pluto is is conjunct Mercury right now. 
and it is actually going to peak on the 5th. So I want to move forward, which will be the next Monday is where we'll kick this off. But I want to tell you this now because this is this this is building like forward. They're coming, they're coming together and then it'll ease off starting on the 8th. But this is going to bring a lot of depth and a lot of intensity to our thinking and our communication. So um, really good time to like get to the bottom of things troubling issues, challenges that you're having, things that you can't quite figure out or overcome, really good time. Um, also time for uncovering like what's beneath the surface for you. So shadow work, really good time for this. Um, uncovering secrets is also, right? This is also an energy because that Pluto energy, it can be secrets, things that are um, hidden or mysterious. You might also be attracted, right, to maybe the more um, occult or esoteric type ideas or um, be open maybe even to like what those might be. Um, with Pluto, we can have influence, power, persuasion. So you might be able to influence people in a really nice way, uh, you know, showing them or, or, or stepping into your power, calling in your power a little bit more and being able to express that or have the thoughts, the empowering thoughts around it. Um, it's just a, it's, it's, it's really, it's a really nice coming in energy, but I also want to challenge you that it can be the flip of it, right? There's the high vibrational ver uh, energy and there's the lower vibrational energy. So the higher vibrational energy is like working through those challenges and being able to positively influence people. And then the lower vibration is getting into, um, you know, paranoia, paranoia, right? Getting into jealousy, um, power from a place of control and trying to control something or control somebody or digging deeper into addictive behaviors or habits. And so remember, <laughs> right? The energy that you're putting into it, right? Is what, is what we're going to see. Um, so I, I'm going to say this is really, really, from my perspective, I'm like, I, I love this conjunction because it gives us that power to like, ooh, like get kind of get into things, um, which I, I really enjoy. Um, we also have this energy with, um, we have this energy with Mars that's going to kind of be playing around here for a bit. They're going to be following each other, but it, there is going to be the conjunction here with Pluto and Mars. So we're going to take that same intensity, that same depth, that same power and influence and, 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 and control. And we're going to move that into our willpower, our desire, our drive, our motivation. And so we're going to see this next and that next week, beginning of um, beginning of the year, I'm sorry, beginning of the month, we're going to see this like push into a little bit more aggressive behavior. So, you know, with this energy, with this sun, with, you know, Uranus and this energy with Pluto and Mars, we can potentially see some aggressive behavior coming forward. Um, the last thing I kind of want to talk about is the sextile that we have with Mercury. So we've got uh, Mercury, whoops, let me go back to, uh, it's going to be just for this uh, upcoming week here, but I want to bring it to your attention because earlier I had mentioned that we have, um, you know, that energy of like dreams and uh, noticing symbols or signs or synchronicities, right? We can often see that as well. And so Mercury and, and, um, Neptune really bring this energy together for us. It's a good time to really be creative in your communication, um, working in your spiritual practices, connecting with the divine, with God, with the universe, um, receiving insights, like being that open channel. So allowing yourself to, you know, receive in whatever ways you receive, you know, you don't have to be in meditation to receive. There are tons of ways that you're receiving information, but it's just connecting in and finding out how you receive that information. Right. So being able to, to, to step into that, um, there's just a softer energy with these two here. So it's more of a, a little bit more social, but also relaxing and chill and taking it easy. Um, so it's it's a really nice, creative, kind of flowy energy that we have coming in with our thinking and our thought and our thoughts. Um, 
as well. We will also have this conjunction here um, as we've been talking about, right? Like they're pulling away Mercury and Mars. And so we're going to see that pull even further away. So my friend, we do have some really great energy coming in. Um, I'm loving this. I, I see it as a really great time, uh, this period here as we're moving in, moving out of January into February and at our halfway point here with Capricorn season and uh, just about you know, same as our uh, lunar cycle. So my friend, I'm blessed and honored that you are here. Remember to close your eyes and let's do that right now. Let's take a nice deep breath in. And find peace.